Yo, Korea got me toe up from the flow up. Man, and it's just, it's just not the business. It ain't cute. <laughs> What's up, you homies? It's your homegirl, Natalie, and today I will be talking to you guys about how Korea has messed up your girl's skin. Not fun. So yeah, if you guys were following me on Instagram earlier this month, when I came back from California, like, something just totally happened to my skin that was, like, so crazy. It was something that I had never experienced beforehand, and so yeah, I was just like, there has to be a reason why. And during that time that I came back, the air pollution here was just about the worst it has been. And I feel like in Korea, every year, it's always, like, the worst in history, record-breaking. It's just like every year, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And this year, I definitely felt it. Yeah, so what I want to talk about in this video is basically my skin for a little bit, what I did to kind of help it get better, and maybe some ways that you guys can also prevent your skin from going all wacky if the air around you ain't that great either. Hopefully this can help you a little bit, so let's jump into it. So I want to state that my voice sounds a little bit raspy because um, I have a sore throat. I went to the ENT this morning, so they gave me some medicine, so hopefully... It'll be okay, so yeah, sorry. And if you're wondering about this shirt, maybe you are, maybe you're not. It's just a shirt that I randomly DIY'd for my Halloween costume like two years ago. I made a stamp out of an old potato that was in my fridge, put some red ink, and I went bam, 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 and then I got my heart shirt. Corazon style, so yeah, that was it. <laughs> also, I want to state that um, I'm not wearing any like face makeup. When I mean face, I mean like my, I shouldn't be touching my skin. Actual uh, skin, I do have some eye makeup on and some eyebrows and some... Uh, lipstick, but everything else is just no makeup. I just wanted to show you guys I guess how my skin is doing like I was telling you This was definitely the worst that I've seen my skin just to backtrack a little bit my skin for the most part Like I've stated beforehand I feel like it's pretty clear and half of it is just because of luck and the other half I think it's because of what I eat and how I maintain my skin like my skincare routine So the air pollution here isn't something new It's something that's always been here and I've been living in Korea since 2015 and it has never affected me like this in a way it has at the same time and I'll tell you why because I actually um, developed eczema here um, specific dyshydrosis eczema which is um, something that comes out on the palm of your hands or on your feet for instance for me I definitely got it on my hands and what it is is um, these like liquid filled little balls that just come out and they're super itchy I don't know if you have that thing uh, I forgot what it's called but like if you see patterns in something it gives you like the heebie-jeebies like, that's like really gross yeah I kind of have that too so imagine seeing that on your own body and you're just like mm, you know like freaked out every time I would see my hand it was just <sighs> my first year here in Korea and I was just like I had no idea what why that was happening. I've never had this beforehand and of course when I went to the dermatologist he's like oh yeah this is uh, some type of eczema just put on this cream and I was like yeah but like where did it come from and he's like oh well you know you, you could always develop these things at any point of age I'm like they always tell you these type of things I developed it while I was here it's, it's something I've never seen beforehand this acts up every time the seasons are changing there's like a really big change in my environment that's when this thing spikes up and oddly enough it used to be on both palms of my hands but now it's just on my right side but this past time along with my my face like my facial skin it was really really bad so yay Korea thank you Woo. so yeah like I was telling you guys I went to LA earlier this month also went through Arizona Nevada and Utah so the air there was a lot cleaner and it started at that point where my skin started kind of acting up. I did bring along like that cream that I normally put on my hand because I knew I was going to have that change in environment. So I was like, I don't know if it, this is going to act up. I started getting these random bumps on my face and I put on that cream on it. It actually went down. So I was like, this is allergies. By the time we got back to California, it was pretty much gone. And then when I came to Korea, literally on that Sunday that I arrived, I guess like one of the worst days that, that we had been having this month, my skin at night, I was just itchy all freaking over. I was like, what the hell is happening? I forgot the name of it. I guess I'll put it down here somewhere. But um, yeah, so I would like scratch anywhere and immediately it would just like whoosh, swell up and start like burning the crap out of my skin. Even though I was like, Ugh, I didn't think it was like that severe because I was like, whatever, I'll, I'll just like let it like 
take a day and hopefully it'll get better. But then my face really started acting up and you know like that face is the money maker. Like this you know I could like cover up but like my face is completely different. Like Monday my skin just looked so freaking bad. Like I've told you guys I have pretty good skin. That doesn't mean that my skin is perfect. That doesn't mean I have small pores because I don't. Okay I got big old pores here and I got mad blackheads over here. And that doesn't mean also that I never get pimples and never get cysts or anything. No absolutely not. I totally do get pimples. I get so many cysts. Even if I go through like these rough patches of the month with my skin kind of acting up, I know that's going to go away. And not only that, my skin actual texture, the quality of my skin still relatively looks really nice. Aside from like, you know, that red area that I popped because I'm someone that picks at my face. That doesn't really help either. Or it's just like a cyst or something like that, or like a pimple. However, oddly enough, this time it wasn't because I was getting like mad pimples, I wasn't getting like cysts, I wasn't getting like all this like acne breakout. It was like my skin texture, the quality of my skin was just so bad. It looked like it was swollen, it was red, it was itchy. One day after I arrived from California, like scratch anywhere on my face, like just like a little bit, and immediately like a bump would come up. Think of like a mosquito bite. Sometimes it would have like a little point, sometimes it wouldn't. On that Monday night, go to wash my face and it just felt so like, just so bad you know I'm gonna wash my face again as this is happening my body's super itchy and it's you know burning and also my uh, palms over here that was coming up like no other the creams that I had purchased beforehand it, they weren't working so I was just like all of like madness and then I was like you know what let me just put on like a nice like mask to like help whatever this thing out really 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 freaking bad idea because right after that my skin holy shit my skin I had to call my friend Kathy to be like you need to tell me not to rip off my skin because I was so close to ripping my skin off it, it was like inflamed I really just wanted to go like throw that shit out my window I looked at my skin again and it's like even more red I had natural contouring because this was so red this was red and I had to scratch somewhere so I was just like this and I washed my face and immediately it was like bumps 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 and I was like holy crap so the next day I went to work and the thing is I have some pictures and honestly when you see these pictures you might be like Like that ain't nothing. And I understand other people have way worse skin problems than I do, but coming from someone who has pretty much good skin to having such a drastic change in the skin texture and quality, it was so alarming to me. Oh so, yeah, don't hate me if it they shouldn't be touching my face. Like, even my coworkers were like, yeah, your skin looks really bad. And I was like, Thanks. I feel like the pictures don't really do it that much justice, I guess, how bad it was. I also put it up on Instagram. I was like, my skin is such shit, you know, and it's like the air pollution. And so many of my friends that who also live here were like, dude, I totally understand the feeling like this, like this pollution is a reason why one, I'm leaving Korea, why I don't want to go outside anymore. Just fucking up my skin and I don't want to do anything. And while I was at the dermatologist, I tell him like, it's the air pollution, like something da 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 da. My dermatologist was like, you know, you can't say it's exactly the air pollution. It's isn't like you weren't you're like 100% like factor for it but basically meaning that if you have any of these like um, existing allergies existing things that the air pollution is gonna make it flare up so so I mean I guess technically it is the air pollution fault right he was telling me it wasn't so I was like Okay, fine. Let's just not put all the blame on this mise manji that we have going on over here. That's what he told me. So he had recommended me some things. He gave me a, a specific cream, which I told him. I was like, I have some cream and like it doesn't work. And he's like, no, no, your situation is super severe. So we're going to actually prescribe you like an actual cream. Like maybe the one that you bought was over the counter, which I was like, yeah, the one I had was over the counter. So he's like, no, no, you have a very severe um, thing going on over here. So we're going to prescribe you a specific uh, cream for that. And then we're also gonna give you some other type of like steroids cream uh, for your face. He's like, but don't use it all the time. And he also prescribed me antihistamines to let the allergy go down. Yeah, so my dermatologist was like, okay, you know, like can't wear makeup, no smoking, no drinking. And I was like, no makeup. I wanted to film some stuff, but I was like, you know, whatever, like that's cool. I I'm okay to not wear makeup. Also another thing that my dermatologist told me, he's like, you also can't go to the gym. And I was like, what? He's like, your body needs to rest. And I was like, oh no. I was like, I wanna go to the gym. He was able to name like the whole thing of like me scratching my hand and like that swelling up. Like he was able to name that. 
he was able to name this, but in terms of my face, there wasn't like a specific name for it. It was just more so like an allergic reaction to everything that's like really going on. When I left the dermatologist, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should also change up my facial cleanser, which he didn't suggest this, but I just thought about it. The facial cleanser that I use is the Misha cleansing foam. For the most part, has been my go-to for the last couple of months. I remember when I was washing my face, like it was burning my skin. So I was like, I need something that's a lot more gentle. So I went into Olive Young and purchased some Cetaphil gentle skin cleanser and I know in Korea that can be really expensive when I went to go buy it Which was I don't know. Let's say like two weeks ago. It was on sale original price was like 18 bucks But then I got it for 11. Hopefully that price is still up and while I was in Olive Young I just like absentmindedly like just scratched my head and I was like oh. immediately it was just like white turned red and then like a little like bump mosquito bite bump and I was like what the hell that night when I washed my face using the gentle cleanser I could immediately tell there was such a difference like my skin was like oh this is fine so I was like okay that's one thing I'm doing right and then I took my pills and I put in the creams or the steroid cream I think though that's what it was called he said just only put it like on the red areas like I woke up the next day the redness um, went down a little bit, which I was like so happy for because honestly, like I'm pretty lucky now as an adult that I have pretty much good skin. I mean, I did go through puberty like everyone else and I did have a, a time where I had, you know, like bad acne and things, but seeing the shift of how my skin was, the texture of it and everything, it just made me so sad that I was like, oh my God, is this gonna be my skin now? So I can only imagine for those of you that who do struggle with this, my heart goes out to you because that definitely takes a toll on your self-esteem and your, and your confidence. And, and in my case, luckily, went along with what my dermatologist had prescribed to me. And by that Monday, my skin was basically like cleared up again. Tuesday, my coworker was like, your skin looks better than like even like the day beforehand. Like your skin is definitely getting better. I went to go for a checkup again with my dermatologist and he decided to keep me on the antihistamines. He's like, you know, we need to just make sure that it completely goes away. <laughs> my camera stopped recording like I don't even know how long ago. And I was like just talking and talking and talking with myself. And I was like, oh, it's not recording and then when I checked back like the footage I also saw that this was like coming undone so like sorry if you saw my cleavage or not sorry I don't know whatever man I'm a woman I can do what I want but yeah so that is basically my story that my skin adventure that I went through over like past couple weeks or so so yeah so the things that helped me, uh, number one, going to the dermatologist, obviously because like they're the professionals, they're gonna know what's actually like wrong or at least they should know something. Uh, number two, changing my facial cleanser to a gentle skin cleanser, that really helped out. Um, if the air pollution is really freaking bad and where you live, I would suggest downloading the app called Air Visual. You can even put like where specifically in your city you're at and it'll tell you how the air is in your particular part of the city. Along with that, one really, really important thing, make sure to wear a freaking mask mask okay in korea it's the kpf 40. i was one of those people that never wore a mask this year no joke i bought so many different types of masks definitely on those days that it's the pollution is super bad put that freaking mask on homies put that mask on you you don't want to be breathing in that air it comes in contact with your skin that's like when your skin is like what the hell is this? This is it starts like flipping out what i like to do on the days that it's like really bad pollution is making sure like i'm as covered as i can be see like my forehead and my eyes but for the most part everything else is covered because i was like nothing's touching my skin i really feel like when i went to california maybe like the air had been like too clean too pure that my body was like what is this and then it kind of like you know some little like red bumps came out and then when it came back to korea and it was like super freaking bad it was like ah what is this and then it just really like reacted along with that too that's my you know hypothesis but yeah what i also wanted to share is like i told you guys I put this on my stories of like how this uh, pollution was so bad a couple of my friends messaged me and told me what has been helping them with their skin i haven't tried all of these out but i was just thinking maybe i could just share them with you guys First little advice comes from Sarah of Two Hearts, One Soul. And what she said has been really effective is double cleansing with a cleansing balm. The foam cleanser just really gets all the crap out of her pores. What actual product she suggests is Hemish All Clean Balm. And she says it's amazing and it has made a huge difference on her skin particularly on polluted days. I was like, ooh, I need to know, but I'm really happy with the Cetaphil one. Maybe once I finish that, I'll turn over to this one. Next one comes from my girl Lorena. She was stating that she had a really bad acne outbreak the past month and it just kept getting worse and worse with the air, but she got it under control 
how by drinking loads of ginger and plum tea. She just bought ginger and made it herself and she also puts a little bit as toner when her skin is flipping out a lot. And the plum tea you can actually buy on coupon. And the last one comes from Gina of Gina Bear's blog and she suggests using a mask from the body shop. It's the Japanese green tea one and she states that it's so good for getting all the gunk and pollution out of your pores. For those of you who are in Korea, there's a body shop at the Hanam Starfield. Yeah. So I hope these little like, tips and tricks really help. I'm sorry that I don't have like a end all answer for air pollution. Um, but yeah, I hope this video, I hope you found this video a little bit helpful. If not, just interesting to talk about. I hope to catch you guys in the next one. I hope your skin is looking nice, looking sight and right. So yeah, be safe, wear your mask if the air is polluted by where you live. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I went to go do this and I did this. Bye! Bye.